we're going to look at a work of art. Uh, normally, when I do a professional art scoring, there are 14 uh, areas that we're going to look at and analyze. Um, and But for this, I'm only going to do seven, okay? And so what we're going to end up doing is we're going to have a conversation around the birdcage, okay? Um, and so this is the painting that we're going to look at today. <coughs> and so this is how it works. We're going to go through seven factors, okay? I'm going to uh, explain what we're looking for. And, and therefore, you're going to know what to appreciate. And then we're also going to learn why it should be considered lower in value, okay? So we want to appreciate or depreciate the work. And what you're going to do is you're going to either say yes, no, or maybe. And then we'll fine-tune that um, answer and we'll subscribe a number to that answer. So if you say yes to the answer, like for example, in this case, when we look at this painting, does it have a clear structure? And by structure, what we're asking is, when you look at it, can you either see clearly or feel that it's been really well uh, ordered, designed, uh, and that it's constructed well. Now, we don't want to talk about color. We don't want to talk about value. We don't want to talk about story. We don't want to talk about anything else. All we want is to look at it and say, does it feel or can I clearly see that it's been ordered, designed, and well-structured? Or does it kind of feel like it's um, uncared for and kind of accidentally planned, you know, or unplanned? And so... What I want to see you guys do right now is answer that question. So either do you feel that it's been well-structured, uh, that has great composition, good design? If so, just type in yes in the little comment. Or you can say no. Or you can say, well, kind of. So I'm kind of curious what you guys think. So go ahead, just like type it in the little the comment box there. And if you say yes, let's just say there. Okay, um, then what I want to ask you is, is your yes or is your no or is your maybe a low yes, a middle yes, or a high yes? Okay, so in my case, I'm going to say that yes, this painting is very well structured. And in fact, it's for me a high yes. Okay, and so therefore, I'm going to click on or not click on, but I'm going to give it the number nine, okay? And so I'm kind of curious, what would you guys give this painting? Um, would you give it a one? Would you give it a five? Would you give it a nine? Plug it into the little comment section there. So Donna says it's a high yes, and so therefore that would translate as a nine, okay? Now, we're going to go to the next slide. We're going to go to the next one. Saturation. Now, saturation means color, okay, in this um, in this scoring because, you know, that's how I like to do it. So we have all S's. So Martin gave it a number eight. So the, the question that I'm going to ask in terms of saturation is, um, is the artwork, does it have a deliberate sense of control over the color? Meaning, is the color... Uh, within a limited palette? Is there intelligent uses of the color? Is the artist having fun playing games with the color to trigger emotions with inside you? Or is does it feel like there's a, a lack of color control or, or a lack of sensitivity to color? Does it feel like maybe the artist is, um, you know, just, just playing with the color um, and not mixing it, not controlling it. It might be really, really bold colors. So there might be parts of it that kind of hurt your eye. So in this case, I, I would say that there is a high control of color. And therefore, um, someone's saying that my sound isn't working right. I don't know if that's me or their computer. Um, and so I'm going to say that this has a high sense of color, and I'll tell you why. Um, the, I like how the artist made the woman in blue. I like, and, and so that's a very cool color, uh, and purples in there. And then the background and the birds are in these warm colors for, um, 
uh, warm colors, uh, the yellows, the yellow greens, and the mixture of those things, right? And so there's a, a, an intelligence that's being applied to the color use. I also like how the blues are long colors, and then where he has the warm colors, it's it's very short and dashy, okay? And there's actually a reason why he's doing that. And so I personally am going to say, yes, it's high uh, and saturate, you know, has high color intelligence, and I'm going to call, I'm going to give it a number nine. And so I'm kind of curious, you guys score it yourself and tell me what you think it is. Now, what's beautiful about this is it, it, <coughs> it's an objective way of looking at art, a more objective way, okay? But it's still subjective. So you, it's what your interpretation is. And the reason why I like to do with a lot of people is because then we get a clear idea of what the the mass consciousness of the painting is so now we're going to get into shade which is value and here i want to look at the artist's use of values light and dark now this gets a little tricky because the painting is a photo um with a light shining on the painting and so it looks like really light values are in the center and then it fades out and this is called a vignette but i don't know if this vignette is actually done intentionally or um or if that's just a, an effect from the light. And so therefore, what we want to look at is how the artist used values. Are there any places in here that are jumping out at you um, that, that you feel are off or not working right? Um, can you clearly see the distinction between uh, light and dark? Now, one might say, the values in this painting are a little weak because it seems like everything blurs together. And for me, normally, that would be a reason for lowering the value of the artwork. In this case, for me personally, I'm going to raise the value of the artwork because of these, these um, low contrast um, uh, values. And the reason why is because it actually helps tell a story, which I'll get into in a little bit later. And so I'm personally going to say that the artist has a very... Um, great control of value and so therefore i'm going to give it a yes and a very and a high yes and so it's going to be a number nine okay now what we're going to look for here is spacing okay and so space spacing is um how we move through the painting and and so the way i normally do that is i start at the top right hand corner and come down and kind of go around the edge and then into the painting and if there isn't any place in which my eye gets trapped or um or uh, or, or or stops and feels knotted or un, uh, or it upsets my eye then i'm going to allow you know and my eye can move through it then i'm going to say well they did a really good job at making sure that there isn't any place in which my eye feels trapped or, or stuck and they controlled their values so that my eye can actually move through the painting without um, going over what we call friction, right? Having too much friction to go through. And so even though this painting has a lot of energy, has a incredible amounts of texture, my eye doesn't get stuck anywhere. And the only place that it kind of slightly gets stuck is right up underneath the girl's uh, chin. But then there's also a good reason for that. And so I'm not going to lower the value of the painting because of that, because I actually think it plays in with the story. Um, also, real quick, I'm going to go back to... Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, yes, it has a high sense of, um, of uh, spacing. And I'm going to give it a number nine. Now, I want to real quick go back to shade real quick. If you notice up around the ear, this is a this is probably, I would say, almost the strongest contrast in this painting. And it's interesting because you have this beautiful dark coming up underneath the ear. You have this flower in the hair. And this is where the eye is. And so what that tells me is the artist wants us to know that she's listening, right? So she's, he's brought us in. Now, he also has these beautiful angles coming down from the arms, which really means like what she's listening to is going into the heart because he's bringing us to that part of her as well. And there's a reason for it. 
Um, but I don't want to get too much into the story on this. So now I love this one. <clears throat> soul. Does the painting have soul? And by soul, what I'm what I'm looking for specifically is uh, when the art clearly explores the feeling or energy of its subject, right? And so if it is exploring that energy, then you want to raise the value of the artwork, okay? Now, how would, when would you lower the value of the artwork? From my perspective, when the work is overly focused on outward details and being done by the book. And so... If you have a subject and, 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 you're, and you're trying to really just focus on capturing the eyeballs and the teeth and all that stuff just perfectly right, and you're not looking at the the energy or the being that's looking back at you, right, through those eyes, then you're you're not you're not engaging the muse. You're you're too focused on the model. And so to me, an artist who's so focused on the model that it doesn't really come across that there's soul or life in the painting. We lower the value of that artwork. So in this case, there is tremendous amounts of energy. The artist, one of the reasons why it's very hard to see the birds, he's made the birds the same size as the plants in the background. He's made the um, the values of the bird so that when you squint your eyes, the birds fall, uh, fade away. <laughs> and you would ask yourself, well, did he do that on purpose or is that a good thing? And in this case, yes and yes. And this is the reason why, because this painting has nothing to do with the birds. It has to do with the bird's song. And the woman is hearing the bird's song. And that's why he's taken the birds and kind of made them fade away. And so all of the quote tree leaves that you see there, that energy, it's the song of the bird that you're feeling, not looking at leaves. Now, he's cloaked it in the subject of leaves to the tree, but what you feel is you're feeling her listening to the song of the birds. And so I'm going to give this a number nine for Soul because I just think he did an absolute brilliant job on looking past the subject and actually capturing the soul or the energy of it. Now, style. Does he have a clear artistic voice or a unique approach or skill set? Or, and this is where we would lower the value of the work, or uh, does it kind of seem like a spin off or an imitation or overly trendy? Sadly, I think this is where he fails. This painting is beautiful. It's exquisite. But when you look at it, you're like, am I looking at a Renoir? But it's not Renoir, right? So it kind of just feels like <clears throat> um, a, 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 he doesn't have his own unique style. It's like he's imitating the style of other artists. So Martin puts a number six. I was struggling because the work is so good. I wanted to say Maybe he has a style, but the truth is I had to be honest with myself and I don't really see anything unique in terms of a style or a voice in here. And so, sadly, I had to give him a three, a high no. I couldn't, go, I couldn't give him a low no or, or too low, but I couldn't give him a maybe. I definitely can't give him a yes, so I had to be within those realms and within those rules. And so lastly, the question that we want to ask in this in these seven questions now like i said if i was doing this professionally for a collector or a museum or something i would evaluate this on 14 factors not just seven but in this case the last one would be skill and is there a clear ability or command over the artistic medium and uh you know and, and so if you're looking at the artwork you would probably lower the value uh, donna says an eight Martin says a six. Um, so if you're looking at it and you kind of feel like, you know, it's unfinished or it's of a low quality or it's been rushed, this is where the, the, the artist is showing that they don't have the command or the skill over their medium. And 
and you and, and the way you know that about the artist is you go and you critique you, you score maybe 10 of their paintings and then you'll get an idea of who the artist is in this case it could just be this one painting okay and so i'm actually going to rate it very very high it could probably be an eight i think he has a really great um command over his paint but maybe 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 an eight um i'm going to give it a nine in this case okay so here is the <laughs> the score so what you're going to do is if you were grading this for yourself you just add up your score there's 63 possible points you just so in this case when i added it up it came to 57 divided that by 63 and boom i got 90 percent now if i was um helping an art collector buy artwork i would advise them never to buy anything that's under 85 percent um and so you can clearly see that that's he's he's over 85 percent so this would be a painting that i would definitely tell someone to buy uh just because it stand it'll stand the test of time the the artwork itself has merit in all of these different factors and so um that that's that's what it is all right uh let me uh, tell me, guys, if you would like me to do a couple more of these, maybe like once or twice a week. Just put a little answer in the in the um, in the comment bar there. The bird cage. And if you go and divide your answers, plug them in there because I'd love to see what you guys came up with. Have a good night.